We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of a game we all held dear to our hearts. It was the game that took the world by storm, leaving many players fighting over who would become the next superstar. However, it was more than just that. It was always welcoming to those who were just starting out and became one of the most easily accessible games of 2017. So let us take a moment to remember the life of Fortnite and how it finally died. But you couldn't tell me where you at your motivation guy. Yeah, that's right, I am back. And today, we're gonna give you guys the latest update on everything from our favorite battle royale. You know, it's no lie that Fortnite has had a big impact on the gaming industry. You know, from live events to crossover content and even a whole slew of merchandise, it just seemed Fortnite would continue to live on forever in the hearts of gamers everywhere. So what happened? Like, where did all the love go? And that's what we're gonna find out as we dive deep into the rise and fall of Fortnite. This year was 2011. Games such as Bioshock Infinite and The Last of Us were still freshly announced as the Xbox 360 and the PS3 were still at their peak. However, during the VGAs that year, one game would make its first ever appearance. Little did we know that this game would change the world forever. The trailer began and we got our first glimpse at the game. It had a cartoonish yet gritty style. Human characters rushed to get as much loot as possible before bringing it back to base. There it is revealed that these humans are actually setting up their defenses to fight off against an endless horde of zombies. It was going to be a combination of games such as Minecraft and shooters such as Call of Duty. With the stage set and the objective clear, the title card descended on us all. This was Fortnite. Then, as quickly as it appeared, it vanished. Wait, what? You thought this was where the story began? When all the fame and fortune started to come in? Nah. In fact, the true Fortnite success story wouldn't begin until years later. In fact, any new news or even footage of the game was essentially non-existent for the next three years after its reveal. It wasn't until 2014 that Fortnite would resurface once more in the back cover of a game in Former Magazine as well as some new details about the game. At least we knew that the game was not dead. Fortnite would eventually release in 2017 under the title Fortnite Save the World, while Save the World would eventually be demoted to game mode by the community. The main Fortnite game would be the stepping stones to what would later become the world's biggest battle royale. In the meantime, another game was gaining popularity and would help inspire Fortnite's transition into the game we all know today. Battle royale games weren't exactly a new concept. However, very few had the spotlight on them at the time, and so one of the earliest games in the genre would be a mod for Minecraft by the name of Minecraft Hunger Games. Another would be PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, or PUBG for short. Taking this idea into account and combining it with Fortnite's crafting mechanic allowed it to become a unique new game all on its own. Thus, Fortnite Battle Royale was born. With it being free to play, it quickly became one of the most played games of 2017. After all, I mean, if it's free, like, you might as well try it, right? Well, gamers did and eventually got hooked. So, with Fortnite rising into popularity the way it did, how in the world did it fall from grace and meet its end? There are many different factors that may have led to this, ranging from interest decreasing to a lack of maturity between pro players. However, the first thing to really examine is how the meta has changed over the years. After all, players will love a game based on how it's introduced, and any changes after that may be made to address a problem players wanted to fix or trying to keep the game fresh as time goes by. However, not all changes can be seen as positive, and so one example of this happening would be Overwatch. Later changes and tweaks only further alienated the hardcore fans who loved the chaotic nature of the game at launch. So what about Fortnite? Well, the game has seen a variety of changes over the years. You know, new locations were added as well as new weapons, building materials, and even new game mechanics. So how can we tell which change started to kill Fortnite? Was it the attempted nerfing of the pump? Or was it the addition of Playground, which may have had an effect on player skills and accessibility for newcomers? You know, out of all the changes to be made to the game's meta, you know, the one that comes to mind for most veteran players is the inclusion of mechs during Season X. These metallic behemoths became like a must-have for anybody who wanted to win at the game. In fact, some would say that the game was pretty much decided based on whether or not you managed to snag a mech at the start of the match. And so while this may not have killed Fortnite upright, it was still a peek at the kind of decision Epic Games could make in the future. And so this same argument has evolved over the years and spread amongst the many pro gamers out there. 
different changes and same complaint. During chapter two, season six, players complain about the primal shotgun that it was just too powerful while in season seven, some consider the railgun and the scanners to be overpowered and in need of removal or major nerf. So if there is any gamer that can be considered the face of Fortnite streaming, <laughs> that's Ninja. Ninja built a brand around playing Fortnite casually as well as competitively. He has gotten so popular that he even managed to branch off of Fortnite. Do you wanna know more about this Fortnite superstar? All right, if you do guys, be sure to check out our video here at Pro Guys. But for now, okay, let's just say that Ninja's popularity combined with Fortnite really helped the game reach new heights. One big moment for the game came when the popular rapper Drake joined Ninja to play Fortnite. Musicians are commonplace in Fortnite today with artists such as Travis Scott and BTS either having their own concerts in Party Royale or emotes featuring some of their popular songs. Even Lady Gaga is rumored to be making an appearance sometime in the future. However, back then, okay, attention from someone like so mainstream like Drake really helped with the exposure. Now, having popular streamers playing your game is great, so what happens when a Fortnite pro decides to quit the game? More importantly, okay, what happens when they quit on bad terms? You know, one such instance where this happened was when Ninja decided to quit Fortnite due to cheaters. After losing game after game after game to players stream sniping him unfairly, Ninja would become fed up with the state of Fortnite and denounce the game. However, even if a major player leaves the game on good terms, it can still have an effect on the community. If a popular streamer moves to the other games and Fortnite loses a source of exposure. How many times have you guys tried a game, like simply because a streamer you enjoy, you saw play it? The same can be really said when a player moves towards another game. You know, their viewers tend to gravitate away from the games they leave. Sometimes, however, the problem stems from the figurehead themselves. You know, Fortnite is home to many different pros, you know, from box fighting legends to FNCS champions. So, you know, there's one thing many of them definitely share in common. And this is the fact that they are rather young, you know, often in their teens. Because of this, you know, many people have come to believe that the Fortnite community has become toxic due to players so young, you know, being put on a pedestal and just letting their fame get to their heads. Some prominent members of the community have even gone out to speak up about how communication with Epic Games was getting more difficult due to the immaturity of the Fortnite pros. One example of this happening would be the leaker HypeX giving his two cents on Twitter. In response, the pro player BBG Kyle clapped back. What resulted was a Twitter war where casual players and other pro gamers took sides. Some would even use the argument itself as further validation of Hypex opinion. After season X, Fortnite would have one last in-game event. Here, the map was sucked into a black hole along with our favorite characters and even the battle bus. Nothing could escape oblivion and then with the blink of an eye, man, the game was gone. For two days, no one knew what to make of it. Did Epic Games really just unplug Fortnite? <laughs> it was impossible to even enter a game with the main menu gone as well. All players had to stare at was the black hole that had just swallowed everything. It was the moment that we really saw Fortnite peak in interest again. Everyone was really asking the question like, was this a part of the event or is the game dead? Some rejoiced, others cried, but eventually the hole would open up once again and really give players their first glimpse at Chapter 2. For a while, this did spark interest and even brought back some of its you know, old player base. However, it didn't reach those magic numbers it had before. Then after all of that, 2020 began. In 2020, we all know what happened, COVID, right? <laughs> And as the virus spread across the globe, the world began to shut down. Stores closed, social distancing was highly enforced, and eventually they came with a worldwide lockdown that left many people at home with the hopes of just riding it out until things got better. With that, dolphins returned to the canals in Italy, goats ran amok in the cities, and the Fortnite players returned to the island. Now with more free time in their hands, the game saw a resurgence. However, this was not only like the way Fortnite was impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, it also saw the sharp decline of land competitions. With social distancing in place, it was near impossible to hold a tournament where multiple people were supposed to attend. Did this mean the end for the competitive scene? Well, the answer to that question is no. You know, while LAN tournaments were gone, Epic Games still had ways to keep competitive players connected. And so back in 2019 during Season X, Epic Games introduced the first ever Fortnite Champion Series, or FNCS for short. And so with the World Cup Council for 2020, and eventually 2021 as well, the FNCS will become the go-to tournament for any professional Fortnite pro that wanted to take home a big win. So in a dramatic turn of events, Fortnite would also take some damage from a certain lawsuit that was trending earlier this year. With Epic Games allowing iOS players to pay for in-game currency directly to them, it essentially cut out the middleman, which was Apple. And so because of this, Apple removed Fortnite from the iOS store and barred any new updates to the game. 
Although the main Fortnite community resides within the PC and console community, like there were many other players who made iOS their home, being one of the best places to really play the mobile version of the game due to the Apple device's ability to pump frames up to 120. I mean, it came as a shock that this chunk of the fan base was suddenly cut off, and while many serious players such as Ducky the Gamer were forced to switch over to Android devices, some would just drop off due to the endless wait for the case to go to court. Even then, it was not guaranteed that Fortnite would ever come back to iOS. So with so many unfortunate or just simply unlucky circumstances like weighing it down, is Fortnite the same beast it was when it was first released? Not really. You know, it still hasn't gone back to those old days when the world was crazy over the game. So with that being said, is Fortnite really dead? No. You know what? It's not. With anywhere between 6 million and 12 million players currently playing the game, it's doing pretty well, considering how the game is currently reaching its fourth year. So with that in mind guys, Fortnite is actually holding on pretty well despite the setbacks. Punch a quarter star me. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed our mock funeral today. And if you guys did, you already know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. And we have so much more amazing content coming out. So until Fortnite actually really does die for real, you're gonna keep seeing us week after week. Hey, I hope you guys keep going, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Hey, keep persevering against all your struggles and obstacles that come your way. I believe in you. I am your number one fan. And connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.